Hoyt, fire away. Uh, you, you've had former President Clinton uh, in Tennessee campaigning for you. Republicans have thrown the L word at you. Um, are you a liberal? I think we ought to display the Ten Commandments publicly. I believe that gay marriage is wrong and voted for that. I've never voted for a budget that was not balanced. I voted against amnesty in the Congress. And I got to tell you, if there's one place where they might be able to get me is that I love kids. I love the fact that we ought to invest more in our schools and send them to college. I'm just a believer that if we can find them to play football and basketball, we can find them for physics and chemistry as well. Uh, they call me a lot of things. But one thing that President Bush has called me is his friend because he knows I stand with him when he's right and I'm against him when he's wrong. And if voters send me to the Senate, I will do the exact same thing. I will look Ted Kennedy in the eye when he's wrong and tell him I think you're wrong. I will look uh, Lamar Alexander in the eye and say, Ms. Mr. Alexander, we can work together on this because I agree with you. But when Ted Kennedy's right, I'll work with him. And when Lamar Alexander's wrong, I will tell him. And I will do the same with President Bush. If you want a yes man, don't vote for me. If you want someone's going to go up there and look people in the eye and say, what's in the best interest of Tennessee in this country and let's do it, I'm asking for a chance. On the vote to go into Iraq or give President Bush the power to go into Iraq, you voted yes. I did, sir. Uh, our congressman, second district congressman, Jimmy Duncan, conservative Republican, voted no. I find that strange. I don't. Jimmy had his reasons. I had mine. What it shows is that we were both thinking. And frankly, that's what Congress needs more of. Um, Jim and I agree on a lot of things and we disagree on some things. But one thing that you should like about that, sir, is you can predict how Jim and I would vote based on that R D thing. For a lot of people, they want that convenience. And if you're looking for the convenience of a person that's not going to think, I'm not your guy. If you want someone that's going to think through this, listen to everybody, come and meet with you and sit with you and listen with you, I'm asking for a chance. And I think that's what Frank Cagle saw and the reason he endorsed us in this campaign. One of the things that I saw as a contrast in the debate was you mentioned uh, extending the runway for FedEx and getting that money. And then a few minutes later in the debate, you talked about uh, needing to end pork barrel, barrel politics. And a lot of people would see that money going to FedEx as, as pork barrel We didn't go to FedEx. They went to the airport authority. Look, you, you I agree. Here, here's what the bill does. It says, stand by your pork. If you want a piece of pork added to a bill, the way it's done now is they wait till nobody's looking and they slide it in the bill. And the next morning you vote on it, and it's so big and it's a thousand pages, nobody goes to read it. What I say is if you want a piece of pork, you have to go to the floor of the House, present it to the entire Congress, let them vote up or down. I think people would be embarrassed to ask for some of the things that, get, that they sneak into the bills. I'd go down there every time and say, I need to expand my runway because when FedEx has a runway to fly to China, that's more jobs, that's more commerce, and it connects cultures. And if people don't want to vote for it, they don't have to. But I'm proud of the stuff we've brought and things that... Shouldn't be brought. I'm going to vote against. You have people want to build insect sanctuaries. They built water-free urinals. That's a place to use the bathroom, I might add, up in Michigan. We should not have done that. But I didn't know it was in the bill. We, in the defense bill, Congress, I voted for it, didn't know it was there. Twenty million dollars to have a party to celebrate the Iraq war victory. Two problems. One, I didn't know we had one to celebrate. And two, do we need twenty million dollars to celebrate that? They slid it in, but no one was looking. If you want pork, you'd have to go down there and ask for it in broad daylight. So whether it was Teach for America, new leaders for new schools in Memphis, Lemoyne on College's Asthma Center, which is doing groundbreaking research, or the airport authority being able to build a runway, I take it. Now, the reason was I said that because my opponent has this odd way of saying I'm not from Tennessee. I didn't know that going to get an education out of the state was a crime. I thought it was a good thing to go get. I went to a good college. I thought I went to a decent law school. was number three in the country when I was there. I thought that was a good thing to do. Now he's painting as if it's something that I did, like I did something wrong. Um, truth of the matter is um, I've been in Congress for 10 years. I've been in the minority party. And what I'm asking for is a chance to go to the Senate. And if indeed this race here shifts the majority, if Democrats don't get it done, don't send me back. Or better yet, if I go up there and I'm in the minority, and I come back and the problems are worse than they are today, I won't run. That's the promise I make. Wait, um, one last question. Go, no, go ahead, Robin. In, uh, <clears throat> in discussing Iraq, you um, take issue with, with Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. Uh, would you explain that? I think he's a good man. He's a patriot, but he's failed. If he worked for any company, small, medium, or large here in, in Knoxville, uh, You'd have fired him by now, not because you didn't like him, but because he promised he'd do things and didn't work out. If we fire baseball managers, George Steinbrenner was about to fire Joe Torres the other day. 
giving them one more year. The guys won five, what, six world, five, four or five World Series, made it to the playoffs the last couple of years, couldn't pull it off. Don Rumsfeld has been wrong not once, not twice, not three times, but time after time after time after time. Six generals on the ground in Iraq and Afghanistan have come back and said, look, he should go. His judgment, his execution, his planning, his instincts were all off. That doesn't make him a bad guy. That just makes him a bad Secretary of Defense. He should be removed. And on that question, we'd like to thank a you. Busy day in my life. It <laughs> is a busy day in his life. The life. man with three hours of sleep. I love it. I wouldn't have any other way. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of Inside Tennessee.